Just a day after Toyota recalled its BZ4X electric car after just two months on the market, Toyota is recalling its pickup truck, the Tundra. Is this the end of Toyota reliability as we know it? Let's dive in. Literally, the wheels were falling off the BZ4X. We'll talk more about that. Actually, I have some more news on that today. But we're going to focus on the Tundra first. Tundra recalled over loose nuts. Not only that, those loose nuts are on the rear axle. So the wheels are falling off on the BZ4X and you have loose nuts in the rear of the Tundra. <laughs> like You can't make this stuff up. A recall of 46,000 pickups will address a problem with nuts on the rear axle assembly that can loosen over time. The recall report filed with the NHTSA blames loosening of certain nuts on the rear axle assembly. And if complete separation occurs, this can affect vehicle stability, brake performance, increasing the risk of a crash. Maybe not as crash inducing as a wheel falling off, but nevertheless, not good. Luckily, this is a cheap as hell and simple fix, just like I expect the BZ4X will be a very inexpensive fix, right? Making sure the, the nuts or bolts or whatever they use to put those wheels on tighten down sufficiently. For the Tundra, it looks like um, effective vehicles will be notified by July 2022 or late July. Doesn't give a specific date, of course, and dealers will inspect or tighten loose nuts if necessary, replace them. That sounds super simple, very easy. It's not going to cost them an arm and a leg like the uh, turbo wastegate issue probably is costing them quite a bit. Even for Toyotas, the advice remains true. Try to stay away first year, maybe second year production vehicles as they're still trying to work out the kinks. You got to keep in mind on both of these vehicles, they're brand new platforms. Everything on them is brand new from the ground up. Still, it's a bit hard to digest the BZ4X one, especially. If you missed yesterday's news, 2700 BZ4X recalled. Most of them are in Europe, of course, because that's the main market. Um, 260 in the United States, 20 for Canada, 110 for Japan, and the ones in Japan were just demo cars. And no joke, one of my longtime supporters on the channel had this to say about the BZ4X recall. Hey Kirk, just saw your video on the BZ. For my nine to five, I work in an auto insurance company writing damage appraisals. I legit just saw a BZ at the shop this week and the wheel fell off, became loose while the owner was driving. It caused damage to the fender and some other components. So crazy of a video on it and I just saw this on Monday. Hope they find a fix for it as that is dangerous. Absolutely. I made the comparison is of like, you spend the last five years getting the best shape of your life for the Olympics. You make the Olympics, you're ready to race, the gun goes off, and you find out that you forgot to tie your shoe. That's essentially like, that's how difficult it is to design and create a battery electric vehicle. And then the wheels just fall off. <laughs> like, it seems like such a minor thing. It's like they just forgot to dot their I's and cross their T's on the BZ4X. So what do you think? Is Toyota reliability gone? I don't think so. And these are first, these are growing pains anytime you have a new platform, new vehicle from the ground up. Toyota issues uh, recalls seemingly quicker than their competition. And oftentimes before the NHTSA tells them to. Um, when I was working for Lexus, the fuel pump recall that happened that affected hundreds of thousands of vehicles, if not more, Toyota was the first. But that fuel pump, I think it was made by Denso, was in tons of vehicles, not only in the Japanese auto industry, but in the entire auto industry, and Toyota was the first to recall it. So I think it's because they have a really strong relationship with their suppliers, so they kind of get vert first dibs for the replacement parts. That's a possibility, but also maybe because they care a little bit more about the integrity of their vehicles, and it doesn't matter how much it'll cost them to replace it as long as the customer is taken care of. So you can look at it however you want, but we're gonna keep moving. I just have one last thing to share with you. I haven't read this yet, but this is the global newsroom, Toyota and Suzuki deep in collaboration in the fields of development of production in India. And we have our first production of a Suzuki de developed model at Toyota Kirloskar motor. The Suzuki across is the RAV4 Prime and the RAV4 Hybrid. So that's nothing new. And I believe Toyota has been rebadging other Suzuki vehicles. So what makes this different? Let's try to find out. 
So they've had a memorandum of understanding since 2017. That's something similar to what Gondam is, right? Honda and General Motors have have a memorandum of understanding. And since then, the two companies have been bringing together Toyota's strength in electrification technology and Suzuki's strength in technology or technologies for compact vehicles for joint collaboration and production in the widespread popularization of electric vehicles. The two companies will now start production of the new SUV model developed by Suzuki at Toyota Kirloskar starting in August. They also plan on exporting this vehicle um, under both badges, Suzuki and Toyota, from India to Africa. There will be a mild hybrid developed by Suzuki and a strong hybrid developed by Toyota. But I'll give you updates on this SUV once it's officially announced. We don't have a product name. We don't have any images of this SUV. I'm going to end it there. Toyota recalls. Good thing? Bad thing? Let me know down below. Do you think reliability is disappearing from Toyota? If you made this far in the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more Toyota news. You guys know I do a lot of that. Catch you in the next one. Peace.